Hello YouTube, my name is Said Mirza. Today we will be talking about the Kaaba and the rampant idol worship in Islam. If you don't know, the Kaaba is a black cuboid structure in Mecca. Muslims claim that it is a house of God and it is a central feature of the Islamic cult. Muslims face the Kaaba five times a day for prayer and also perform pilgrimage to this black stone idol. If we are being fair and honest with ourselves, then we can see with our own eyes that this is idol worship. People competing to get near this black stone and kissing it? How is this not idol worship? Just YouTube Hajj in Mecca and see what is going on there. Of course, Muslims will claim that this is not idol worship and that they are following the traditions of Prophet Muhammad. This is a manifest lie. First of all, we do not know what the Prophet Muhammad did 1400 years ago. If he was following the Quran, then there is no way he would have ever gone near this black stone. The Quran is very specific against idol worship. There are numerous verses, if one cares to look, condemning idol worship. You will not find the practices of these idol worshippers anywhere in the Quran. This makes sense, because Muslims do not follow the Quran at all. They follow the traditions which they claim to be from Prophet Muhammad. They only pay lip service to following the Quran, but what they are really following are the practices of their forefathers. As the Quran states, chapter 2, verse 170. But when they are told, follow what God has bestowed from on high, they say, Nay, we shall follow that which we found our forefathers doing. Why? Even if their forefathers did not use the reason at all and were devoid of all guidance? The simple fact is that Muslims, Christians, Hindus are only following what they saw their parents doing. The Arabs in Muhammad's time were worshipping three female goddesses, Alat, Aluza, and Manat, and claimed them as God's daughters. The Quran addresses these claims. Chapter 53, verse 19 through 23. Have you considered Alat and Aluza and Manat, the third one? Do you have the males while he has the females? That, lo and behold, is an unfair division. These are but names that you made up, you and your forefathers. God never authorized such. They only follow conjecture and personal desire while the guidance has come to them from their Lord. So the Quran is accusing the Arabs that they have associated daughters to God, and they are just names that have been invented by their ancestors. This is similar to the Christians saying that God has a son. We humans, for some reason, cannot accept the fact that God is alone and one, having no partners or progeny. The next Quranic imperative sums up idol worship. Chapter 5, verse 90. O you who believe in intoxicants and games of chance and altars and the divining of the future are but a loathsome evil of Satan's doing. Shun it then so that you might attain deliverance. There are many stories in the Quran about idol worship like the one we see going on in Makkah. Let's start with Bani Israel to whom Musa was sent. Chapter 7 verses 138 and 139 And we let the children of Israel cross the sea. Then they came upon a people who were devoted to idols. They said, O Moses, make for us a god like they have gods. He said, You are an ignorant people. These people are ruined for what they are in, and worthless is what they do. Chapter 20, verses 83 to 89. And what has caused you to rush ahead of your people, O Moses? He said, They are following my teachings, and I came quickly to you, my Lord, so you would be pleased. He said, We have tested your people after you left, and the Samarin has misguided them. So Moses returned to his people, angry and disappointed. He said, My people, did not your Lord promise you a good promise? Has the waiting for the pledge been too long? Or did you want that the wrath of your Lord be upon you, thus you broke the promise with me? They said, We did not break the promise by our own will, but we were loaded down with the jewelry of the people, so we cast them down, and it was such that the Samarin suggested. He then produced for them a sculpture of a calf that emitted a cry. So they said, This is your God and the God of Moses, but he had forgotten. Did they not see that it did not respond to them? nor did it possess for them any harm or benefit. Another set of verses about Ibrahim also explain idol worship. Chapter 6, verses 74 through 79. And Abraham said to his father, Azar, 
Will you take statues as gods? I see you and your people are clearly misguided. And it is such that we showed Abraham the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, so that he will be of those who have certainty. When the night covered him, he saw a star and he said, This is my Lord. But when it disappeared, he said, I do not like those who disappear. So when he saw the moon rising, he said, This is my Lord. But when it disappeared, he said, If my Lord does not guide me, then I will be among the wicked people. So when he saw the sun rising, he said, This is my Lord, this is bigger. But when it disappeared, he said, My people, I am innocent of what you have set up. I shall turn my face to the one who initiated the heavens and the earth, inclining towards truth, and I am not one of the idol worshippers. So the fact of the matter is that the worship of any sort of idol, whether real or imaginary, is against the very basic principles of the Quran. God cannot be represented by stones, trees, stars, or anything created. He is beyond these things. In today's world, we think that we are free of such superstitious practices. This could not be further from the truth. We have only traded one idol for another idol. If today's society we worship the ego idol, first and foremost we are worshipping ourselves. This culture of me, me, and me is the modern day idol worship. The Quran warns against taking our own desires as God. Chapter 45, verse 23. Have you seen the one who took his desire as his God, and God led him astray despite his knowledge? And he sealed his hearing and his heart, and he made a veil on his eyes. Who then can guide him after God? Will you not remember? Chapter 25, verse 43. Have you seen the one who has taken his desire as his God? Will you be a caretaker over him? In this increasingly morally bankrupt society, we are encouraged to succumb to our lowest desires every day. The concept of YOLO, you only live once, and you do you, is designed to make us nothing more than consumerist animals who trade momentary happiness for the ultimate bliss of heaven. It is high time we started seeing the deception happening around us and restrain our inner animal. It is only by remembering God, reading the Quran, and applying its principles can we ever break free of the chains of this modern-day idol worship. Going back to the rampant idol worship by people who claim to be following the Quran, it is that they are being deceived by the devil, or shaitan. Today's Muslims claim that they are following the Prophet Muhammad. The Quran responds to this claim. Chapter 25, verses 27-30 through 30. The day the wrongdoer will bite on his hand and say, I wish I had taken the path with the messenger. Woe to me, I wish I did not take so and so as a friend. He has misguided me from the remembrance after it came to me, and the devil was always a betrayer of man. And the messenger will say, O oh my Lord, my people took this Quran as a thing abandoned. So, to sum it up, revering a black stone or even asserting that it has a special significance to God is a manifest lie. God did not sanction worship of any object that he created. If you want to worship God, then follow his commandments in the Quran. That is the real worship. The black stone in Kaaba is the center of occult worship and has nothing to do with the God in the Quran.